let me present to you two quite different young men. One, a good boy who with a responsible job making lots of money. Two, a rascal in a hot rod with an air foam mattress in the back traveling across this country. Which one, which one is the better attitude to have, I guess? Um, on, the, on the outside, it might seem like the better attitude to have would be responsible, get that job, make lots of money. But is that really what we're called to do? I mean, when you think about it, yeah, we're called to be responsible. But are we called to make lots of money, get that good job? Is that, is that what we're here for? Or is the life of adventure better, in a sense? I think the, um, the answer is looking at why people are attracted to the faith to begin with. And I think it's because of that worldly disregard, that disdaining of worldly standards, of thumbing it to people who clutch their possessions, of sticking your nose up at those who are worried about their pensions. There's no adventure in that kind of life. It's stagnant, it's stale. It's boring. It's worldly. And I think one of the attitudes you need to have to step out of the system before we can even start a parallel economy, to step out of that system and to be truly not, just not to be part of it at all anymore, is to have this spirit of adventure in the hot rod flying across the country. Uh, there's a movie called Vanishing Point. The original movie came out in 1971. And there's a, there was a made-for-TV version of it that came out in the late 90s with Viggo Mortensen in it, which is a little better in capturing the ideal that I'm trying to get across here. The undertone of the movie is very Catholic. Um, the main hero of the story or the character in the story is a Catholic by convert. His wife uh, converted him and he has a job where he drives cars across the country. Uh, he works for a restoration shop. They build muscle cars. He delivers them to the client and his wife is pregnant with their first child. She's also very ill but there's still a month until she's due and so he takes a job driving a car all the way to Arizona from wherever he was, I can't remember. And um, while he's there, he uh, flips and gets another job to come back in the same direction. So he phones his wife and she's okay with it. That way they could have the extra money for her to have the child in the hospital. So he does that, he gets into a 1970 Dodge Challenger with a Hemi and he starts going. And he stops to make his first phone call and finds out that his wife is in the hospital. She's gone into labor early. She's really sick. She has to have an op emergency operation. And so he tries to drive as fast as he can to the closest airport. And he gets uh, pulled over by a couple of motorcycle cops. And they kind of rough him up a bit. And he just jumps in his car and takes off and it starts a big long car chase across the country which eventually gets publicized and televised and he becomes this local folk hero that nobody knows anything about nobody knows why he's driving this car and why he won't stop for the police um, he eventually does get that message across as why he's doing it through a radio broadcaster but the powers that be are just determined to stop him. It doesn't matter why he's doing it. it doesn't matter what he's doing. The powers that be are going to stop him. It starts with, the, with the, the motorcycle cops and the power trip the guy was having. And then it goes on to this next guy who's this chief of police in Utah or something like that. And he's even worse. And then the, the head of the FBI gets involved and he's got to turn this into a terrorist thing. This guy's hauling guns and all this stuff and he's a white supremacist. And it just gets worse and worse, and the, and the road traps get worse and worse until he finally gets to the end. And the whole, th the whole tone of the movie is spiritual in a sense. He remembers all of these things that his wife told him about the faith. He's got the St. Christopher and the St. 
um, Anthony medal with him in the car. He hangs it from his mirror. He kisses them a lot while he's trying to get through all these blockades and stuff. He he thinks about his faith during the during the whole adventure, trying to get home. I don't want to spoil the end of it for you, but uh, I recommend the movie. Watch it. Vanishing Point. That's the attitude. That's the attitude that we need to have to step out of the system, to get away from the system. We need to be able to accept that the powers that be are going to throw everything at us, and we're just going to keep on driving through those roadblocks. We're going to find tricks. We're going to find ways to get around them. We're going to drive better than them. And it's going to be an adventure, and it's going to be something that you can't control the path of. But I believe it's a step in the right direction, and I believe it's the right attitude to have to move towards some kind of independence and some kind of way of um, reestablishing the kingship of Christ, the social kingship of Christ in the world, is by having this attitude of rebellion towards the world. So in closing... I would just like to recommend watching that 1998 made-for-TV version of Vanishing Point with Viggo Mortensen in it. Uh, don't watch the original one. The original one doesn't have the same ideal behind it. It's it's more uh, free freewheeling kind of. Nobody really knows why he's doing what he's doing, and he's popping uh, speed constantly just to keep himself awake, and that's not going on. And in the Viggo Mortensen version, it's he's driven by a real ideal in this in his movie. So that's the one I would recommend watching and um, kind of get a sense for what I'm trying to talk about is why is why I'm using this illustration as this movie is this attitude of rebelliousness towards the world, the the boringness of the mundane. Catholic Northman out.